Lots of questions. Exams are great. Let's see. For the exam, there's a folder at the bottom of the top section of iLearn that says something like this semester's exams and keys. So I drop in what I think is the right blank exam for this one and the key. So check it versus what you got. If you see mistakes, they happen, I make them. Everybody makes them. If you see mistakes in the grading that you think should be graded right, we'll get it fixed. Be cool. If it's one thing, take a picture of it and send it to me. If it's several things, which at least one person has pointed out, um, probably it's easier to do it in person, so that's fine. We should get you those points. I'm not trying to steal them or not in a bad way. That's good. We should ask for the points you've earned and you should get them. That's good. Um, it might be easier to do it in person. So remember, no discussion this week. Yay! Except it's like, ooh, I actually like that because I like Andrew and I like you, John. That's okay. I like Catherine. I like no, just no acceptance. Um, so I will be available Friday from 10 to 2. I'll plan to just be in my office instead of that ridiculous room behind Pete's. So just come find me there. I'll be there from 10 to 2, working on whatever I'm working on, whatever it may be that I do with my time. I don't know. Um, and then you can come and we can set up there and work on whatever you want to do. That's cool. Monday, I got an appointment to give back my diesel cheating Volkswagen to the Volkswagen dealer. Yeah. So I'm going to do that. That's at 9.30, which means I probably won't get here at 10. But whenever I'm here, I'll be available in and out all day. So you can try and find me on Monday. And as you say, we're going to do the exam. Final exam. I made it food themed. Do you get food? You can bring food. That's fine. I don't mind. Okay, so that's exam three. It'll be over there. Otherwise, if you, I mean, I guess if you're here, you probably have it. If you're not here, I'll have the exams. So if you're watching this on YouTube tomorrow morning or whatever it's on YouTube, I'll have your exams. That's exam three. Discussion section grades are also up. Please go check and make sure it looks right to you. If it's not, probably not a big deal to get it fixed. So just ask whoever it is that's responsible for your grade to fix it if it's not right, and we'll get it fixed. I know it's dangerous to hand stuff back before we work, because then you have it and you're distracted by the thing. That's normal. That's not fun. That's okay. That's okay. I got a few requests for what we should work on today. They largely focused on acid-base chemistry, buffers, and solubility. That's reasonable. Questions or thoughts before we begin that? Until the final. 
We don't usually do things that way here. I had one class that was like that. I didn't like it that much. Anthropology, I didn't like that class at all. Sorry for a different day. Uh, basically, if you do well enough on the final, that'll replace your grade. If you get like a 40 on the final, that doesn't replace your grade. You get what you earn in the normal way. Yes? Questions about the extra credit. Um, there's an extra credit assignment, which I gotta make sure to turn it in to set up right, but um, a short assignment that's due, I think, at the time of the final, if I have it set right. Um, that's worth three points on the final. So that right there gives you a little boost on the final exam. Um, it's not really about chemistry, so just go get it done. The homework extra credit will count towards the homework. Which I think is too good. Anything else? Keep me going. We'll never talk about chemistry. Maybe that's good. Maybe that's bad. Uh, we did achieve more than 80% on both the things that I asked. The course evals and the other surveys. That's good. If you haven't done them, still do it because it helps me. Both of those help me. But we got those. Okay. Let's talk about chemistry. I have some stories and some jokes that aren't funny, so when we need a break, we can return to these. This is a diagram I think is cool, because I'm, I'm a nerd and I like chemistry. It's named after Marcel Corbet, I think it was Belgian. Called the Corbet diagram. I have a book that is nothing but E's in my office, and I paid for that book. Wow, that's nerdy. But they're really quite powerful, I think. On the x-axis is pH. It goes from approximately 0 to approximately 14. On the y-axis is voltage. If you take a point on the graph, that means it's a pH and a voltage. Here in the red dashed square is approximately physiological conditions. More or less, you've got oxygen floating around in you, so that's about where the voltage is because oxygen is an oxidizer. And physiological pH is neutral-ish. If you look at uh, this diagram for iron, the major species, which you can only kind of read, is right here. Can you read it? I'll write it larger. FeOH3, solid. That means that in you, and frankly in most biology, iron should be rust. It's not, which is good. Why? Could be kinetics. So it could be that it, would, it should be rust, but kinetically it's slow. I don't think that's usually the case, but that's a really good answer. Being able to distinguish between kinetics and thermodynamics is huge going forward in science. So I don't think that's the case here, but that's a really, really good thought. Well, what, what form does iron take in the body? Hmm? Where is iron in the body? In your blood cells. Okay. Anyone know what the, say again? You know what the molecule is called that contains the iron in you? Yeah, hemoglobin. That's one of them. Good. So iron is stuck in hemoglobin. Iron, hey, wait, that's a metal. That's a Lewis. Yeah, Lewis acid. Lewis acids interact with, yeah, Lewis bases. Okay. So iron, the Lewis acid, is stuck, bound to a Lewis base that happens to be called hemoglobin. Here's a KSP. It's quite small. Yeah, 6 times 10 to the negative 38th. It's quite small.
I might phrase a question thusly. What is the molar solubility of FeOH3 in pure water? Less. I don't know why. But very commonly, you will find solubilities listed as grams of a material per 100 milliliters of water. No idea why that is. Doesn't make any sense to you. Just make it a liter. Why make why 100 milliliters? I don't know. But this is what it's done. If you look on Wikipedia, for example, this is very common. So you might be called upon to convert between molarity, moles per liter, and grams per 100 milliliters. You might be called upon to determine the solubility at a given pH, not in pure water, but buffer. pH must be, for example, 6.8. Equilibrium constant, let's just start by writing the balanced equation before we do anything else. I kind of can't help myself once I see a balanced equation and I know we're in equilibrium land, I'll write products over reactants. Leave out liquids and solids, coefficients become exponents. Aha, but I was given a number. Only had one sig fig. Got to remember the minus sign there, that kind of matters. I have one sig fig, but I have the number, so I know what products over reactants equals numerically at the equilibrium. So what I've done so far, I heard a suggestion which I like a lot, was basically set up for any any equilibrium problem. I haven't yet thought too hard about what was asked, what I need to do. But this is set up that you generally will want to do no matter what when you're working with equilibrium. Now let's go back and see what we want. What is the molar solubility of FeOH3 in pure water? Basically, like if I knew these concentrations, I would have the answer because those are concentrations in molar. I don't know. Well, I know how much FeOH3 is in pure water, like before I had it. What's in pure water? H2O. So how much FeOH3 is in there? <coughs> Zero. Okay.
Did anyone actually get Vanilla Ice on the phone? I bet he still has a flip phone. If I know that guy, and I'd like to think that I do, which I don't. Yep, irrespective of whether or not I know Vanilla Ice and his cell phone preferences, I will probably do an ice table. <laughs> what if he watches this video on YouTube? It's pretty unlikely. But I guess it's possible. All right. Initially, I have no iron in my pure water because then it, it wouldn't be pure if I did. Can't go lower than zero in concentration, so both of these will increase. By how much? Yep, 1x and 3x because those are the coefficients in the balanced equation. Zero plus x is x, zero plus 3x is 3x. X times, let's see, we got to remember to cube everything here. So 3 cubed is 27. And then X cubed times X is X to the fourth. 6 times 10 minus 38th. Keep a couple sig figs for now. My calculator, like it though I do, is inferior and it does not contain a quart root button or whatever it would be. Fourth root is not there. So what do I do? Both sides to the one fourth power or the point two five. raised to the 0.25 power. So that's X. No units on it yet, no chemical meaning yet, but that's X. Let's call it a break. I want molar solubility. That means I want like a coefficient of one, basically, in the balanced equation. So. What do I want? I want that number. One sig fig. It's not very soluble at all. Thank goodness for hemoglobin. Yep. Now when people take iron supplements, there's like amino acid chelates and whatever more stomach friendly forms. They used to give you iron, like iron filings, the metal. Ugh. Ugh. I mean, you can eat it and it does get absorbed some in your stomach, but supposedly it hurt pretty bad. I think it hurt because iron in your stomach reacts with HCL to make hydrogen gas. In your stomach. Yeah, I know. Thank goodness for progress. 
Ah, molar solubility. The things that are running around in my head, man, I'll tell you. It's a mess up there. Molar solubility is 2 times 10 to the minus 10th molar in pure water. Mm -hmm. Questions or thoughts? Molar solubility in KSP, back and forth. How might Gels modify this question? Because he can't give you what he just did on the final exam, but he does want to assess KSP. I could give you the molar solubility and ask you for KSP. That's good. Is that what you were saying? Okay, good. Yep, flip it around. Still a nice table, but you're kind of working it backwards. Good. Other thoughts, other questions? Say, say, that, say the beginning of that again. Matthew has an excellent memory. He remember part B. So we got part A, which is molar solubility, but now we want grams per 100 milliliters as well. Try B and then try C. I'll try B and then we'll check it. You want that solubility, which let me just refresh. Two times ten to the minus tenth molar. Here at the left, sort of middle, here in the left middle, 2 times 10 to the minus 10 moles of MPOH3 per liter is how I would rewrite my answer to part A. 
Why? Because that sets me up to do a unit conversion and keep everything straight. So you don't have to do it in your head. If you do it in your head and get it right, that's fine. But it's nice to be able to keep it straight. That way you know. Let's do one thing at a time. Let's get out of moles. Mole. Molar mass? Who did it? 106. So we had 98. 88. 88. What is it? I don't know, you guys tell me. I'm asking you. Alright, let's go with that. That will get me to grams per liter. But it don't want grams per liter. Yeah, let's let's get it to milliliters. So right now, if I stopped, I would have grams per milliliter. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just do this so we have this number. So 2.14 times 10 to minus 11th grams per milliliter. How many milliliters? 100. Man. Hey, I'm going to mess with this. That's just illegible. Yeah, one sig fig. I don't know what I did, so I'm gonna erase because it was it was just wrong. <laughs> so I'm gonna erase it. And I'm gonna start over. Yeah, Jimmy. Yeah, you can do it that way. That's probably cleaner. So Jimmy has a good suggestion that'll keep me from making as many mistakes as I am. Hey. We're gonna need that story after this. No, I mean, I'm starting I'm starting over. Because Jamie has a better way to do it. So I'm gonna do that. In every liter. So I want 100 mils on the bottom. What? I haven't finished yet. 
How many liters per 100 mils? 0.1. Okay. Better. Now. Moles, liters, grams per 100 mils. Yes? Okay, but leave the 100. Because you want 100 mils in the units of the answer. People don't like this one. I love that question. Is it going to be this complicated on the exam? I don't know. It's going to be what it is. Yes, you do know. I do, yeah, I do know. You're right. You're right. I screw this up again? I should fire myself from this question. No, I did right. All right. <laughs> you ever have that happen, where you you make one misstep and then you can't you can't go back and fix it? <sighs> I think we got it. No, but I think so. Goodness gracious, it's the unit conversion of all things. That's 10 to the negative 11 grams per milliliter, which is correct, but does not answer the question. Because you want grams per 100 milliliters. So here's an option. Here's an option. If you see something like this on the final exam and you say to yourself, I don't like that one. Don't do it. Don't do it. Get the rest of it right and you'll still be happy with the grade. Sure. Yeah. If you get the rest of it right. What if they're all like this? Why would I make an exam when they're all like this? I am. I'm being a realist. If you walk into the exam and you get all bent out of shape at yourself for not knowing 100% of the things on the exam, I don't think that's realistic. You should aim for 100%, but you should not be upset when you don't get there. Just for me to you. Whew. What is the solubility in molar at pH 6.8? We're going to need a break after this. What do I do? Convert pH to pOH to OH minus, and then I will have an initial concentration, frankly, a final concentration also of OH minus. Good. Round and round the squares of knowledge, at least one of them. pH plus pOH is 14, so pOH. 7.2. POH is a negative log of whatever is there, so the negative log of OH minus. OH minus equals 10 to the negative POH.
Now, could you do an ice table here? Sure, but I wouldn't. Because you know the concentration of OH minus. That is the concentration of OH minus at pH 6.8. Hey, 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 that one I can do. Ah, so are you not supposed to multiply the molarity by three? I did not. Why not? Multiply the molarity of what? If you multiply the molarity of OH minus by three, it is no longer the molarity of OH minus. If you have the molarity of a chemical, put it in. If you have X, then you need to think about what do I need to multiply by? Because X doesn't, X is not a chemical. If you know the concentration of a chemical, well, you're right in. Very good question, very important. Sig fig. You consider it the molar solubility, you consider it the concentration of iron 3 plus, either way, you will be happy. So a question for clarification about when do we multiply by the coefficient. When what you have, the quantity you have is x, then you need to multiply by the coefficient to get the concentration of a chemical. So get this down and I'll go back to the ice table and talk about that. Very important. Let's look at this ice table. If the number that I have is x and I am asked for the concentration of OH minus, concentration of OH minus at equilibrium equals 3x. So I will multiply by 3 to get to OH minus. If I have OH minus, I don't do nothing. OH minus is OH minus. Good. Good clarifying questions. Very good, very good. So a question for uh, clarification of the wording of the last part. Would the question say, what is the concentration of iron 3 plus at pH 6.8? It probably should. You might see it either way. But yeah, it probably should, because that's what you, literally what you solve for is iron 3 plus. Question was, is 6.31 times 10 to the minus 8, is that equal to 3x? I would hesitate to say yes. Mathematically, probably so. But if I didn't get there by an ice table, I just sort of wouldn't, I wouldn't say either way. You want to hear the hair on fire one? That's the that's the best one. You don't want to hear anything. You just want to keep going. That's okay. So I used to I used to play music back when I didn't make money, and we played at this club called CBGBs in New York City, where basically punk music, as we know it, was born. So it's pretty cool. Like we played on a Tuesday night at four thirty p.m. So it was like not a headline slot, but Still, you're on stage where like the Ramones played and got famous for the first time. It's pretty cool. So we're getting set up, and I'm relaxing before we start. I'm sitting at a table at this completely empty bar because it's 4.30 on a Tuesday. And I lean back, and then I smell the unmistakable odor of burning hair. 
Because you know, you know when you smell burning hair. And I'm leaning back like, what? Look at the ceiling, what could possibly be leading to the smell of burning hair? And it was me leaning back onto a candle. <laughs> that's my story. I was okay. I was okay. But it smelled bad. Did I have a bald spot? I don't remember. Probably. All right, these are two proteins that are used in your body for transporting iron, ferritin and transferrin. Ferritin, as I said, remember, um, proteins get represented by these squiggles and lines because otherwise you can't draw that many atoms. It have not make sense. I think these are crazy, especially ferritin, because it can hold 4,500 iron atoms. Isn't it? Yeah, So Nick, question of clarification. Can you say that transferrin is transferrin iron? <laughs> yeah, you could. You could. You'd be at risk for getting beat up by certain other members of this class. I take it they would call you a parent. Can you, so broader question, can you make bad jokes in chemistry? Absolutely. You have a whole wall of them in our office. Please come. We just got two more today contributed to that wall. They're pretty bad. Um, so some of these, this is a molecule. This is an enzyme, but it is one molecule that holds 4,500 iron atoms. You calculate the molar mass, even just with the iron, it's big. This is weird, because it doesn't behave like other small molecules that I'm used to thinking of. It holds thousands of iron. I think that's crazy. Um, transferrin only holds two. But this F is formation, so the equilibrium constant for iron sticking in there is much, much, much higher. So it holds iron very, very tightly. This is how iron is soluble, so this and heme. This is how iron gets moved around from food that you eat into places where your body needs iron. These are neat. Um, I see equilibrium constants, so if I were to make up a question about these, it would probably involve products of a reactants. We have some of that, but we'll keep going to do acid base. Gastric acid is composed mainly of HCl, sodium chloride, and potassium chloride. Gastric acid has a typical pH range of pH 1.5 to pH 3.5. Which of those three molecules is probably responsible for the pH? Yeah, HCl. Sodium chloride and potassium chloride do not measurably affect pH once you have strong acid. Please calculate the typical range of the concentration of HCl in molar based on this pH range. So what do I mean by calculate a range? I mean calculate two values. And it will be between those. Strong acid. I told you it's a strong acid, but how'd you know? Yeah, there's no pKa. So on an exam for a weak acid, I'll have to give you a pKa. Right.
So I use pH equals negative log H3O plus. Calculated concentrations. And I turned them into scientific notation because it was kind of easier to visually deal with. Check the sig figs, pH, they all come after the decimal place. Just one. And then I circled it. But hey man, you calculated the concentration of H2O plus, but you asked about the concentration of HCl. Why is that okay? Yeah, because there's one H. Strong acids are all monoprotic. Could be an exception, but not that I'm aware of. So there's one H3O plus that comes out of every HCl, one to one. The bases, the strong bases, where you need to watch this, because some of the alkaline earth metals, like magnesium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, have two OHs. So you need to watch the ratio there. The acid should be one to one. What do you mean by like typical range? Like just like what it is? What do I mean by typical range? Uh, the direct answer is when I Google searched it, that's what I found. Um, there is no reference, so I don't even know where I found that. Online. If it, knowing me, it was on Wikipedia, but I don't know. So how does that molarity calculate or get me to a range for HCl? The reaction that I would draw, like the balanced equation, oops. For HCl reacting with water as an acid would be this one. And I draw an arrow because it's a strong acid and we assume all the reactants go to products. Um, that in, is probably the short answer to why you can take it straight to the table. Every, literally every molecule of HCl you put in solution will become <laughs> H3O plus as close as you can measure. From, uh, from this equation here. From pH equals negative log H3O plus. So you plug in the pH and calculate H3O plus. Oh, okay. Move the negative sign and then you tend to the. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you got to plug in the right. Other thoughts? Okay, we did a strong acid just now. Got yeah, hair mustaches. That's good. We did some solubility. We looked at some proteins. Lidocaine is a common local anesthetic. It's used in lots of different types of medicine, but also in dentistry. What's this chemical formula? I don't know. But we can figure it out. It's got C's, N's, O's, and H's. There's one O, so I'll leave that as is. There's two N's. I'll take those points, thank you very much. Um, let's do carbon. I see six in this ring. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And to do the H's, you can count them in your head if you can do it, otherwise I would draw them in. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. Check me, but that's what I get. Three, four, five, six, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 
13, 14, 15, 16, 19, 22. Please name two functional groups in this molecule. So you might see alkenes because you see double bonds. Technically here this is an aromatic group. If it's in a ring and there's three of them in the ring, this would not technically be alkenes. I've been pretty soft on that because we only barely talk about that. An alkene is carbon-carbon double bond. But when it's by itself, when it's this ring, it's a different functionality. But I see a C double bond O with an N next to it. And that's an amide or an amide. And I see this N bonded to three carbons or hydrogens. I mean, good. The bad jokes that I put up in the chem office are a mean guy made me memorize all the functional groups. And then the following was amid all this other work we have to do. Yeah, it does matter. The, the doubts, the, what I don't like about those jokes, I like a lot about those jokes, what I don't like is that they don't help you remember the functional group. Irrespective of that, a common formulation is 1% lidocaine hydrochloride. This molecule, as formulated as the hydrochloride, is a weak acid with a pKa of 8.01. What is the predicted pH of this solution? What category of problem is this? Weak acid. It actually says it. What do I do for weak acid problems? Ice table. Weak acids and bases use ice table. Buffer, if possible, you will use. Anderson has a Good. I like being excited for getting it. You want to do it? Yeah. Yes, no. If I'm going to do an ice table, I need the equilibrium constant, not the pKa. So I need to dig Ka out of there. Approximately 10 to the negative eighth. But for what reaction? The weak acid reaction.
right, so so far I've done a bunch of reworking of what was given to me. I converted a PKA to a KA. I wrote out a balanced equation, put products over reactants, said that, well, that's the equilibrium constant, so that's KA. How am I going to get from what I've written to answering the question? I want pH. So I'll use my statement, but what parameter do I want? My statement is just a method. I want H3O plus, because if I take the negative log of that, I will have pH. Good. So let's do a nice table, but keep an eye on H3O plus, because that's what you want. Start those at zero. What was my initial concentration? It was small, 0.043 molar. Reactants react, products are produced. Is X small? Yeah, probably. I don't know. Let's try it. I have a setup. If I find X, I would be happy because I will then know the concentration of H3O plus. And then I can take the negative log of that to get pH. That's right. Like whoa. Google's telling me how long it's gonna take me to get home. It's telling me to end lecture. Isn't that funny? So for x, I get 2.0 times 10 to the minus fifth. That means I have 2.0 times 10 to the minus fifth molar H3O plus. Negative log of H3O plus equals pH. I actually spell pH. Usually not something I struggle to spell. So I calculated a pH of 4.69. Was a weak acid? I said weak acids and weak bases. I used an ice table. Nice that you gave me a weak acid problem, because then I don't need to do it as OH minus and go all the way around the square. That's good. So it's even an acid. Now what was the context for this question? Okay, so we asked the question, I used the generic acid HA, I don't even know that much about it, but what, what was this? This is a formulation of an anesthetic. So if this, when you go in to have a cavity fixed up, if this is injected into your gum, at a pH of four and change, that's not physiological pH. So it stinks. That's right. Stinks and burns. That's right. Once you're numb, it doesn't. It, you know, it's not so bad. Once you get lidocaine, your lidocaine is not bad. It's very, very bad. You need painkiller from a painkiller. So, the dentist that I know found a way to formulate this so that right before you're injected with, no, with lidocaine, novocaine, whatever, it is buffered up to physiological pH. It doesn't hurt, and it works faster. Pretty clever. So we did, me and six students did some summer research on that for that dentist, it was, it was cool. Studying how to buffer these properly using carbonate, things like that, it was neat.
buffers. How will I know that a question that I'm addressing is a buffer question? There are two main ways. Say again. Okay, so you could be given a PKA and told it's weak, but I just did that one and it was a weak acid, not a buffer. So it's good, but I need more. If you have a combination where what you end up with at the end of all the chemical reactivity is a weak acid and its conjugate base, then you have a buffer. If you have both HA and A minus, by definition, you have a buffer. Or the problem will say the word buffer. It's pretty common because it's hard to talk about buffers without saying buffer. So that, I mean, this one says buffer, right? Does it say, oh, this one doesn't say buffer. It says on the slide. It says in the title, but not in the question. So what about the fact that it says how many moles? That doesn't necessarily mean it's a buffer. In the acid-base buffer worksheet that you did in the discussion section, which by the way is tremendous practice for this because it deals with every type of problem I could possibly ask you, um, you are, in some of those you add acids and bases and it doesn't end up as a buffer. So it depends on what you end up with once they react. Um, in this case, I am adding a strong base and it says moles. I would say probably the question you will get will be a little more clear than this one. This one is, a, is like a challenge question, maybe. But if I have a buffer, and I add strong base, I'll use the plus x minus x form of Henderson-Hasselbach. Anderson Hasselbach being pH equals pKa plus log of A minus over HA, and that can be either in molar or in moles. If you're using the plus X minus X, I would put it in moles. But let's start with one that's, that we can get to a little bit more quickly. What is the ratio of A minus over HA for buffered lidocaine at pH 7.4, which is a good target physiological pH ratio? This might be more along the lines of an independent test question you might receive. You're given a pH, you're given a pKa, you're asked for one part of henderson hasselbach And you're even told it's a buffer, because it has the word buffer in the question. A sig fig. And you might say, all right, it's a buffer, so let me try plugging everything into Henderson Hasselbach. 
And then you might plug in what you have, the PH and the PKA, and then you might say to yourself, this guy he gave me enough information to get to an equation with two variables, HAA minus. But you're asked for the ratio, so it's okay. So you can solve for the ratio. Did I answer the question? Yep, because I found the ratio. Do I have the right number of sig figs? Yep, because I increased it to two, so it would not be a ridiculous question. Three, do I have the right units? Well, it's a ratio, so yeah. No units for a ratio. not do it in my head if that's what you're asking. <laughs> it's worth checking. Cool. Yeah. Pick a really hard Half-Life one. Do you want it to be like harder than what you get on the exam or exactly the same as what you get on the exam? Exactly the same. 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 Just a little bit harder? You guys, you guys, you guys, I'm not going to, I'm not going to give you exactly what's going to be on the exam. Well, then why did you ask? Because I, because it's, because come on, because of course you want that. Half-lives. I will tell you one thing. I almost always ask about first order half-lives. Why? Because zero and second order half-lives are kind of stupid. Because they change. They're dependent on the concentration. If you solve out the integrated rate law, which is where you must start for half-lives. You end up with the concentration in the half-life equation for zero and second. So it is a real thing, you can measure it, but it's kind of useless because it's constantly changing. <coughs> so first order half-life is the one that you need to have the best grasp of, so we spend the most time on it, and so I usually ask questions about that.
first order decay with a half-life of 2.0 times 10 to the minus 6 per second. That's not right. Seconds. Half-life is a time. It was found. It's not a very good sentence, but it gives you some information. What was the rate constant? Follow-up question. How long will it be until 95% of your initial sample has decayed? Okay. For half-lives, we use integrated rate law. First order integrated rate law is the natural log one. For a half-life, you can use the identity that half of your material remains and plug it in. You will simplify to either the natural log of 2 over k or if you prefer negative oops, natural log of 0.5 over k, mathematically equivalent. So once I know that, how do I find the rate constant? Plug it in. You can flip out T and K there. Rate constant. Big number. Relative. Big. 10 to the fifth per second. Does that make sense? If it goes quickly, I should have a short half life. And I do. 10 to the minus 6 seconds is the half life. I second guessed it myself and had to double check it. But I think it's right. Emma? So, on the exam, how much of this do you have to show? If you remember the half life equation, if you just say, I'm going to memorize the first word half life because it comes up a lot, L02 over K equals T1 half, you don't have to show how to derive it. You kind of have to know because you have to do the second part. How long will it be until 95% of your initial sample has decayed? Well, same integrated rate law. But what's my condition now? 95% has decayed. What do I put in this space? I put 0.5 before because 0.5 was what remained. Yeah, 0.05. You have to use what remains. So you have to look a little bit carefully at the wording of these questions. Sometimes it will tell you when XYZ percent remains. You plug that in. If it tells you how much is decayed, you got to flip up it and do how much it remains. point of making a substitution is get rid of that.
rules of logs. Over through, and luckily I found the rate constant in that first part. What was it? 3.5 times 7 fifth. Eight point six times ten to the minus sixth. What are the units of my answer? Seconds. Good. One over one over seconds, which is good because I was asked for a time. How long? Okay, so how do I, can I basically, can I, the question was can I revisit, the, how do I get from the wording of the question to knowing confidently what number to put? You need, in, in your identity, which is sort of above the hand symbol right now, the A of T equals, in this case, 0 0.05 times A initial. You need to put a fraction that remains. So in this case, 5% remains when 95% is gone. So I put 0 0.05. Um, whatever, whatever it says, say, I, give me a second, I can figure out what it says. What I need is what remains, and then go take that out of the question. That's how I would put it. Okay, I'll be in my office the great majority of the day tomorrow from about 10 to 2, maybe a little longer than that. Uh, and then Monday, and then I'll see you Tuesday. You can go find a replacement for the exam. Thanks, guys.